percent of them are women and girls. Human trafficking globally profits around 150 billion U.S. dollars every year. That is around 411 million dollars a day, 17 million dollars per hour, and 300,000 USD per minute. Imagine all that money profited from the pain of others. Modern sex is trafficking and slavery is still a thing, and slavery now. To contact the National Human Trafficking Hotline, call 1-888-373-788 or chat online. <laughs> so that was just a little intro to human trafficking and just a little bit intro to her life. So, um, just a little bit about her early life. Um, she was born in a, um, she was born in Northeast of she was born in northeastern Cambodia, um, surrounded by savannas and forests in, in around 1970-1971 in a village called Bo Srat, which is a old tribe of mountain people. Um, her father was Khmer and her mother was Hmong, which are very opposite tribes. Um, her father was never really in the picture, but her mother left her at a very young age. We have no idea why. But she, she, um, Samai likes to believe it was because she thought it was better for her not to be there. So she left her with her maternal grandmother. But um, as soon as the Khmer Rouge took over, her maternal grandmother left. So she just lived in her tribe, which was about a dozen round bamboo huts. Um, and she lived in a hammock because a family shared a hut and there was no need for her to be there. But um, she had, there was this man named Taman who used to care for her and his wife, we never get to know her name, but Taman's wife and Taman used to care for her until um, Taman gave her away to her grandfather, um, but we are not sure if, if Taman um, was aware that um, what, it was a mistake or if he actually sold her to her grandfather. So. Taman and his wife, before they sold her to their grandfather, took in Somali and kind of adopted her into their family, but then they sold her to her grandfather, which is not actually her real grandfather. When, in the school she went to, when they were around 12, they learned how to be proper wives to Cambodian men. Some of the rules that they were taught is, on the first night of your marriage, your husband can do anything to you. And if you sleep with your back towards your husband, it means you want a divorce. And if you step over your husband's leg, he can hit you. Like, that's not allowed. But once she started to hit puberty and develop more, her grandfather started touching her. And when she was 12, she was raped by a Chinese merchant. The Chinese merchant threatened it if she told anyone he would have hurt her or her family. And at this time, she was still attending school. So um, a little later, her grandfather married her to a soldier. And this, uh, her husband was always out fighting. And um, but then one day, like one day, he just left and never came back. So a month after he left, uh, her grandfather brought her to um, Phnom Penh, where uh, he, she was sold to Auntie Nop, uh, who would eventually bring her to Auntie Pew's brothel, and uh, sh so she could make money for grandfather, and sh she constantly gets hit, abused, and raped in the brothel. And uh, she saw other girls get killed in the brothel, whether it's because uh, they didn't obey her, their clients, or because they tried to escape, so uh, the owner would shoot them, and she was tricked by many clients into thinking they were helping her escape, or they rather just like rape, raped her or abused her. So, yeah. so she met she met this French dude Dietrich as a prostitute, and Dietrich was really rich and gave her a thousand USD before he left to France permanently. Uh, the money freed Somali from her aunt and. And then she met this guy called Pierre, and he was like decent looking, but he wasn't rich. Pierre. 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 And he also spoke Khmer. French. Yeah, he was like French, but then he spoke Cam Cambodian. So yeah, actually, I think they call it Khmer. Khmer, yeah. Khmer Rouge. 
and he was really nice to Somali, so they got married. <laughs> so then after they got married, they moved back to Pierre's town in France. I started calling Pierre, if you can remember. Pierre. Pierre. Okay. And when they moved there, Somali was freed from prostitution because she lived with Pierre. So she was allowed to leave. And before they left, Somali showed Pierre her family. And Pierre wasn't really the best husband because when Somali's adoptive mother asked if he would look after her, Pierre responded with, she can look after herself. So then later they moved to France and P Somali met Pierre's mother and Pierre's mother didn't really like Somali because she thinks she's kind of gold digger and she was racist towards her and she, she thinks she's just a prostitute. So when they were looking for jobs, Somali found a job in a hotel, just like cleaning around a hotel before Pierre found a job. And but she left that job because the men there were racist and disrespectful to her. So she went to a different hotel and did the same job, but the hotel had more old people and they were more respectful towards her and that job made her happy. So before she started her foundation, she went around trying to help prostitutes in the brothel by handing out soaps and condoms. Um, she was struggling to find sponsors, and finally she was noticed and received the Prince of Asturias Award in Spain um, for a role in promoting human rights. And the award came with 40,000 US dollars, which helped Somali start her foundation. And after that, she also received a lot of international attention and started receiving money for her organization. So um, after she married to Pierre, um, she actually started a family with him. Uh, so she first got pregnant in France, and uh, but then they moved back to Cambodia to start um, uh, helping other prostitutes in Cambodia. So um, but then she flew to Bangkok because the in Cambodia the hospitals weren't very clean, and anyone could buy like a diploma to show like, oh I'm a doctor in Cambodia. So, and her first child was called Adina, and then she became pregnant again in 2001. And this time it was a boy, his name was Nikolai, born in April 2002 in Bangkok. Uh, but sadly, uh, Pierre and Somali divorced in 2004 because uh, they started drifting apart. So, uh, but she received a lot of recognition and awards for her work in, uh, for helping prostitutes. And so in Sweden, she received the World's Children's Prize for the Rights of the Child. In Germany, in, in Germany she was awarded the Roland Berger Award for Human Dignity. And in Washington, D.C., she was honored at the Vital Voices 2009 Global Leadership Awards. Yeah, she really became kind of a big thing, right? And she's actually, you can see her on the right, she's quite attractive. And I think that was part of her sort of glamorous. You know, so it's a quite a rags to riches story. You yeah, know, and, and I'm uh, a, a, a Cambodian, a very poor Cambodian prostitute who is able to then go back and serve. And as a child, she was made fun of a lot because of her appearance. Because in Cambodia, yeah, the the beauty standard is plump and pale, and she was She's dark. She was dark and skinny. She's dark and skinny. So then, she wasn't very considered very pretty. Or actually, not at all. She was considered very ugly yeah. in Cambodia through Cambodian eyes, but um, in our world, like the modern world, she was considered really hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Jenna. laughs> But she went on to try and help people that have been in, in the same situation as her. Yeah. So um, throughout re throughout researching um, on the on Somali and her book and just her, her perspective, um, I came across a few interviews that I saw and that really struck up some interest. And I decided to put them into a poem that was inspired. Most of these are actually her. Everything that has true meaning that's like, they don't know how I felt, that's what she said. So I just- Sorry, I missed what you just said. Pardon? These are all, these most, are all, of, these most are just, of these words are yeah, from the actual they're just, they're interviews. They're fragments of I put, I put them together, there's some things in there that are mine, but, 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 but most of them are her words. Yeah, I don't have any quotes in here, they're all just kind of 
paraphrase of what okay, he said. That's fine. Okay. What people don't realize is how it affects me mentally. Of course, the way they touched me left an effect, but the impact it left on my mind is what hurt the most. I used to make myself go numb to try and block out their pain. They would call me <laughs> they would call me names and make me feel worthless. They would add pain on top of my hurt. It was never ending. Eventually I broke, physically and mentally. My body was always aching and my head was always throbbing. The voice that used to tell me good job and you look nice was hardwired to tell me you're nothing and will never be anything more. Little girls all over the world understand my hurt. They go through exactly what I go through. They break and become so broken, nothing can change it. Just to put that down. Um, some girls who decide to go all the way with boyfriends, friends, or even strangers decide they regret it and call it rape. They don't know rape. They don't know how it feels to have something like your virginity stolen from you. To feel that person push themselves on top of you as you scream no. To feel yourself shatter into little pieces and become a shell of who you once were. Um, sorry. Um, I want people to understand the pain that I felt and realize that I'm not one of a kind. This is happening all over the world to people of all different race, religions, color, um, size, and gender. I want everyone to be aware of the conditions that I was put in and that I'm still in mentally. This is my story and I want to share it. Okay, so me and Sarah painted, Sarah and I painted this painting and we're just gonna explain what I mean. So the different patches of skin tone, kind of like just all over the canvas, represent these represent that it can happen to anybody of any race, any color, any gender, any shape, any size. And that's why they think that's the skin tone. And then the blue heart represents... Um, um, the blue heart is the anti-trafficking symbol. Um, Somali really enforces that in all of her... The anti-trafficking anti symbol. Okay. It's right, it symbolizes, it symbolizes um, those... If you see that, it's like... They fight against human trafficking. Um, so Somali, that's one of that's one of a brand in a way that she enforces. Um, she uses that in a lot of her presentations when she speaks um, publicly or when she does um, just awards. She likes to bring that up just to show that you need to. It's it's just something that's always there for her, and just. And the blood that's underneath coming from the heart, it represents pain. Because the girls that go through this are scarred forever. Nothing can rid you of that trauma that you go through when you're put into a brothel or you're raped every day for four years. Nothing can erase that mental pain. Yeah, so now we have Jeopardy, Jeopardy to see how to well you can listen. So, <laughs> um, so there are how many teams are there? There's three teams. There's three teams. Can everyone nominate a leader, please? Me. 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 Lemon. What? Yes. What? Yes, Casey. Okay. So essentially how you play is um, uh, I'm going to ask each one of you guys. So I'm going to ask you guys. Mr. Schmidt. teams? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Schmidt, can I turn the light off? This is so yeah, good. sure. Yeah, you always get Yeah. Okay. So actually this is how we're going to do it. We're going to click on a uh, number. You guys will just pick one and then whoever knows it. Raises their hand, and the person, the group who wins, will get candy canes. Cool. And, and if you get it wrong, you lose points. Like depending on, on the number. Candy okay, so who, who wants to start? Okay, Jane, what would you like? 
500. Early life. Oh Early life, 500. Yes. <laughs> but I want you guys to know if you mess up, all of your points go on. Okay. okay, we don't have any points. But, but, any, but right now, if you know the, if you know the que answer to okay. the question, Next. you guys all um, can answer. Do we need yeah. to ready? No, that's not how it's right, right. Okay, it's 500. 500. Early life. life. <laughs>
Four. Four. No. Six. No. Fourteen. Fourteen. No.